As someone that loves creatine, it's kind of odd to say that this literally might work better than creatine. Not only might it work better than creatine, it might work exceptionally well in conjunction with creatine. I'm going to come right out and tell you what it is because this is something that needs quite a bit of explanation and sort of teaching on how to use it. It's called guanadinoacetate or GAA. Just going to refer to it as GAA. Now, it is unique in that it is a precursor to creatine, but we're seeing that it gets taken up specifically by particular tissues. So it's not like creatine where it just kind of gets absorbed everywhere in a sense. GAA gets pretty selective about how it gets absorbed. And when used in tandem with creatine, it's really powerful. So we first started seeing stuff on GAA back in 2015. That was the first time where researchers were like, hey, this is interesting because they were looking at it in pigs. It was an early PLOS1 study. Don't need to go into a lot of specifics, but essentially they found that GAA, when put up against creatine, would get taken up in specific tissues, particularly the muscle tissue and a little bit in the brain tissue, whereas regular creatine was taken up in the muscle and also the liver. But they saw, like, wait a minute, why is GAA like driving up creatine in these tissues more than creatine itself? The long and the short of it is that this kickstarted a bunch of human research that we've been seeing since 2015. And there was a big study that came out in 2024 that we'll talk about that really sort of put the nail in the coffin, suggesting that GAA should probably be taken alongside creatine or even by itself sometimes. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. After today's video, I put a link down below for Seed Probiotic. Now, I'm a big fan of Seed. I've been using it for uh, probably about five years now, and I've never been a probiotic guy. The reason that I like them is they convinced me with the scientific evidence. Bottom line, they put the science first, they had the clinical trials, they put their money where their mouth is, and they showed me the data and it worked. And when I tried it, I'm like, wait a minute, something is happening here. I actually notice a difference. So I put a link down below for a 25% off discount link for Seeds Daily Symbiotic. So it's a prebiotic and a probiotic in one, Something that I definitely recommend people take if you're trying to make any kind of lifestyle change, it all starts in the gut. So you start changing the gut, things kind of fall in place. So that link for 25% off down below in the top line of the description. So like any good researcher, I say, well, show me the human data, please. And with that, we look at a study that was published in the Journal of Applied Physiology, Nutrition, and Metabolism. This was really interesting. It was like one of the first studies that really looked at human data. This was a randomized controlled trial, and it was a crossover design and it was done over the course of four weeks. And it was looking at the fact that, well, we know the muscles are super energy demanding. We know the brain is super energy demanding. So how does GAA influence the uptake into the muscles and the brain? Long story short is what they found with this was that creatine worked really darn well at getting creatine itself into the muscle and the brain. But GAA specifically drove creatine up 16% higher in the quadriceps and about the same in the brain but not necessarily in other areas of the body, right? So what's interesting is that GAA seems to influence creatine uptake, particularly into the brain and into these larger muscle groups. And it's kind of hit and miss. The bottom line is GAA almost has this intelligence about it because it's a precursor to creatine. It drives creatine up where we seem to need it. This is really, really cool. Now, I'm a huge fan of creatine. Personally, I take a lot. I take 15 to 20 grams a day. I take a lot of creatine because I move a lot and I use my brain a lot. So I started adding GAA as soon as I started making this video and kind of understanding the research behind it. And I have to say, the sleep has been phenomenal. Waking up bright-eyed, bushy-tailed and needing less caffeine has been phenomenal. So I have no relationship with any GAA company. It's a cheap supplement and it seems to be highly effective at combining with my creatine. But let's keep diving in so we can understand how we can use this more. Quick note, please do hit that subscribe button and drop a quick comment down below for the algorithm. It just helps these videos out, right? It helps get them out there to the right people. So I want to know more about the brain though, because if the brain is functioning well, then the muscles function well. So they did some more human data on the brain specifically. This was published in the journal Clinical Nutrition, and they gave three grams, a pretty decent dose, of GAA. Then they used what's called magnetic resonance spectroscopy, so MRS for short. And what they did is they looked at the brain to monitor the creatine levels. So what did GAA do to the actual brain creatine levels? 
on average, there was a 17.3% increase in creatine in the cerebellum. There was about a 12 to 13% increase in the white matter and about a 9% or 8.9% increase in the gray matter. Why is this so crazy? Well, because with straight creatine, it gets into the brain, but the brain blocks a little bit of it. We have this blood-brain barrier that blocks just a lot of the creatine that we take in. It gets in there a little bit, but we're not getting all of it, right? Now we can talk a little bit more, and we will in this video, about how you can increase creatine uptake. Because I'm not saying ditch your creatine. I'm saying add GAA in addition to your creatine. I'll explain why in a second. But then there was a new study that was taking a look at GAA with creatine on brain function. It was published in Nutrients. And I'll just read you an excerpt from the study. GAA positively affected several brain performance outcomes, including specific domains of memory. What we're finding here is that there's this role in energy provision, which means it's helping out neurotransmitters. It's actually helping out acetylcholine, which we'll talk about in a little bit. It's helping out taurine in the brain, and it's even influencing GABA. So it's making our brain calmer and faster. There's a saying that I've heard from a number of neuroscientists, and that is that a calm brain is a fast brain. Maybe you've heard slow is smooth, smooth is fast. When you're stressed and your brain's going a million miles an hour, you're caffeinated, it's not when your brain's working well. It's the guy that's calm, cool, and collected. It's the eagle, right? It's that eagle, it's that special forces operator that's boom, and he's able to think, right? That's what we want. We don't want to be the maniacal, like, aha, kind of harebrained person. This is what GAA seems to be doing helping the brain stay calm and fast. But one of the most fascinating studies, probably the newest one yet, came out at the end of 2024. This was looking at the effect of GAA combined with creatine on oxygen saturation and hemoglobin in the brain, which means how much oxygen are we getting to the brain? Fascinating. They gave subjects two grams of creatine and two grams of GAA, and they measured their blood oxygen saturation prior and after a couple of different things, at rest, during a meditation, during a cognitive task, and in the recovery stage after the cognitive task. Bottom line is that with GAA in the mix, their blood oxygen saturation was better across all places. So especially when they got into a task, they actually got more blood flow and more oxygen into the prefrontal cortex and to the regions of the brain that were being used. Guys, this is insane we're actually deliberately directing energy where it needs to go. I know it's hard for me to express how cool this is in a video, but I hope that you can see it through like the sincerity of what I'm saying here. And again, I have no affiliation with any GAA, the company at all. This is just, this is the kind of stuff we need to be paying attention to. So how is this working and how should we take it? Basically, GAA seems to be influencing like electricity in our brain. It's like affecting neuronal signaling. It's affecting these neurotransmitters that are actually allowing us to signal better and have energy directing in a certain way. It's literally helping our brain electricity. This is making it so that excitability is changed and that neural transmission is the way that we want it. Imagine just your brain firing the way you want your brain to fire, period. One of the more fascinating things, for those that might be a little bit more advanced, is it seems to inhibit glutamate to a certain degree and increase extracellular glutamate. So essentially the brain is kind of marinating in this glutamate. Why is this an interestingly good thing? Well, this is phenomenally important for neuroplasticity, for memory, for learning, for being able to adapt. And let me just give some context, right? We see a lot of people in the mental health space utilizing things like ketamine to improve depression or to deal with PTSD. This is a very real thing, something that I've personally done. And what makes it particularly unique is it floods the brain with glutamate and it binds to the NMDA receptors, which makes you very neuroplastic. So the reason that works for PTSD, for traumas, is because you have a window of time where you are highly neuroplastic and you can start to make new habits and you can override some of these traumas. Highly effective. We use it in all kinds of use cases uh, throughout the medical system. It, it works really well. It turns out that GAA has a similar effect, although much smaller, right? So you're getting this extracellular glutamate that's triggering this neuroplasticity, which explains why memory improved so much. And then lastly, it's improving the breakdown 
of acetylcholinesterase, which allows us to develop more acetylcholine, more actual brain energy. You know how we talk about how choline is a precursor to acetylcholine, so when we eat eggs, we get the choline from the eggs and it helps boost our brain activity? Same kind of thing, except you're breaking down acetylcholinesterase so that you can have more acetylcholine do its job. Essentially, just more brain energy. So how much should you take? Okay, the simple math is that you really need to be taking two to five grams of GAA. It's safe, it's pretty water soluble, you're not gonna really overdo it, but you wanna take about 60 to 70% GAA with what you take in creatine up to a certain point. So what that means is if I'm taking five grams of creatine, I'd probably want to take about three grams of GAA. If I'm taking 10 grams of creatine, I might go up to like six grams of GAA. Point is, is that you want to be in that ratio. But if you're going more than 10 grams of creatine, I wouldn't really recommend going above six grams of GAA. And the simple math really shows that unless you're really expending a lot, you could probably get by with two to three grams. Now, the clinical studies, the RCTs, they're looking at it in a pretty balanced sort of, been like, I don't know, safe dose. But again, we haven't seen much literature suggesting that GAA is dangerous to take in higher amounts. But if it's kind of a line of sort of diminishing return, you may not want to push it beyond that, really. Why waste your money? Now, another thing that you need to pay attention to is that you want to take it in the morning, right? It has a pretty quick absorption rate. As a matter of fact, it might actually help creatine get into the system even faster. So creatine is dependent on a particular transporter to get into the brain specifically. There's this thing that's uniquely named the sodium chloride dependent creatine transporter A8. This means that you require sodium for creatine to really get into the stores properly. Okay, now this does not just count for the brain. It counts for the muscle too. So I'm talking about this is literally better than creatine. Well, it helps creatine, right? So GAA helps creatine get into the muscle, helps it get into specific tissues. One really kind of interesting trick that you can do is you can combine it with salt. Plain and simple. You can take some salt with your GAA and your creatine and it can help get it into the muscle a little bit better. Electrolyte balance is super important. As a matter of fact, we've seen that salt can increase creatine uptake 47%. When sodium and chloride levels are elevated or where they need to be, creatine gets taken up 47% better. That might actually flip it on its head from what you think. It might allow more creatine to get into the muscle and stay out of the extracellular space and get into the intracellular space making less puffy and less water retention. That is cool. And then when calcium and magnesium extracellular stores are lower, meaning they're in the muscle and getting taken up, so if you take enough magnesium, then you're gonna have that go into the cell. That's going to create a positive gradient with sodium that allows creatine to come in. So five grams of creatine in the morning with three grams of GAA and about 500 milligrams of sodium, just use an electrolyte. Okay, they can just take an electrolyte that gets you a decent amount of sodium. It's gonna help draw the water in. And then of course, obviously the hydration. So as always, keep it locked to hear my channel. See you tomorrow.